Welcome to Parenting Decoded, a podcast for practical approaches to parenting. I'm Mary Eschen. Holidays and gift giving can bring about so much stress to families who are sucked into the commercialism of our current situation. In this podcast, I want to give you all some hints about making gift giving a more heartfelt experience, not only from you as the giver, but also how to create an attitude of gratitude in our kids who are receiving those gifts. I'll also go over some ideas about how to handle sibling-to-sibling giving, as well as extended family situations, which can easily get messy. I'm recording this in the holiday season, but it really applies to gifting at birthdays, graduations, or any other type of event. As I was researching, several articles offered a concept that I really thought could make gift giving much simpler and less commercial. It's called the four-gift tradition, where there are just four gifts exchanged from parents to kids. Something you want, something you need, something to wear, and something to read. Isn't that sweet? It sets an expectation for getting gifts, but a clear limit on how many, and that there are different categories, not just one category of something you want, as happens in many families. I also came across a fabulous article by Kelly at Happy You, Happy Family. It's called The Most Meaningful Gifts for Kids Who Have Everything. I'm going to go over a few of her wonderful ideas, but I want to encourage you all to read the full article that I'll post in my show notes from happyyouhappyfamily.com. First, you want to keep in mind that kids who already have all their needs met get bored with new stuff quickly. Those toys we spent so much time, energy, and money picking out frequently just move to the back of the closet within a month. It's so frustrating. We feel our kids are so ungrateful or spoiled, right? I remember buying the Star Wars BB-8 remote-controlled robot, and after the first week, it just sat there. Ugh, what was I doing wrong? It sure felt like I was wasting my money. How could I improve my gift-giving? Kelly says... Research shows that after a while, the human brain gets used to new things. It adapts so much that the new things become not new pretty quickly. Oh dear, how do we counter that? This is the part I love about Kelly's article. It focuses on giving gifts that create memories and experiences. We all might have tried a few art kits or construction kits over the years like I did when my boys were growing up but I never really focused on gifts for creating memories and experiences. But I really should have. I'm going to run through some of the ideas from her article, see what resonates with you. There are way more in the whole article, but I want to help get some ideas flowing. The first fun one is monthly boxes of fun. There are lots of companies that offer some cool and creative kits to come once a month. You can select based on age and interests. A few Kelly mentions are Kiwi Crate, really creative craft and building kits by age and by topic. Little Passports, where a fictional pen pal sends letters once a month from around the world, and your child can track on a map where the pen pal is that month. Kid Artlet sends a hardcover picture book combined with art supplies for a family project that is related to the book. Cool, fun, lots of different things available online, especially. The next category is conversation and everyday kits. The ideas are pretty simple and not expensive, but involve some setup to get them to the gift wrapping stage. Create a conversation kit that you can have at the family dinner table every night. Your kids can have fun pulling conversation ideas out of a mason jar or bowl. Kelly sells printable cards but you can also find other sets of cards to print yourself or make up your own and put it in a decorated box, jar, or bowl. Create a family playlist of favorite songs or dance songs or whatever category you choose. If you have kids who are old enough, have your kids create playlists for each other or for a particular event coming up. You can print the list out and put it in an envelope so that there's something to open. Set up a journal for you and your child. Pass it back and forth, writing notes and thoughts to each other each day or each week. Write letters. 
This one can create really wonderful memories and is one of my favorites. Instead of shopping for gifts, take that hour and sit down to write a letter of gratitude and love for family members. I'm talking paragraphs, not just a simple card that just says, love you so much, mom. Making time to slow down and really formulate loving thoughts about each other is such a precious gift. You can put them in envelopes, in stockings, or under the tree. Easy. When it comes to giving gifts that create memories, besides writing letters, I think the winner is activities with time, since these can build memories in ways that stuff can't. There are a few different ways to give the gift of time. Some are done inside the home and others outside the home. Let's talk about activities for family at home time. These can be fun kits you put together that revolve around doing things at your home. Movie night in a box, full of themed candy, popcorn, and stuff to go with the movie. Game night. Pick a new game where you can all play with no electronics that you print out invitations for and include plenty of snacks and treats to eat while you play. Puzzles, my favorite. Get a new puzzle or borrow someone's where you can just enjoy being together as you figure out where the pizza pieces go. Gardening kit. Wrap up a whole kit of things to grow, dirt and tools, so you can plant together. Pick out flower bulbs or plants or veggies that your kids love to watch grow and wrap it all up in one big bundle. A Fun Times coupon book. This is one that could be a booklet with things like a pillow fight, staying up 30 minutes later, pick what's for dinner, or taking a mental health day from school. Teaching dates. If you have a special skill like woodworking, knitting, baking, welding, painting or sewing or glass blowing, something that your kid is eyeing to do with you, set up a coupon for teaching them that skill and put it under the tree. Next, I want to talk about family time with places and events outside the home. Many of us take our kids to events, but we forget to make them special or seem like gifts. Make a family event special by having a special announcement of it in a card or letter. Let your kids open it to reveal what it is. Here are some ideas that are in this category. Some of them have to be done after COVID, but I have to say that there are some really cool virtual events these days, so search around the internet for some of those. One of them can be to take them to a play, take them to a movie, or arrange to see one of those new releases that are being streamed as they come out. You could give them tickets to watch a sporting event or other event together could enroll in a class. Take a class together where you both learn something new that you've been wanting to learn. You could take a tour. You could take a hike or do a scavenger hunt. You could go on a camping trip. Give a membership to their favorite museum. You could do something really wild and crazy like set up a splash day or a mud day. Plan an event with invitations where the whole family can get soaking wet, running through puddles, or sit in the mud and make mud pies. I'm talking really wet, dirty, and something your family doesn't normally do. Not the everyday type of play that your kids might do on their own. Something like cover daddy in mud kind of challenge. If you choose any of these activities with time, I'd encourage you to make sure that you take plenty of photos so that you can cement the memories via an album or a screensaver in a place where everyone can see them. I could go on and on. Kelly has a huge list of still more ideas. Those are just to whet your appetite. I do want to move along and cover the other side of this gift-giving experience. What about you? I know I tend to think of myself last, even though I spend hours thinking about what the rest of my family might need or want. Some years were a little awkward when my family got a load of gifts and there were a meager set for mom. It made me ask myself, whose fault is that? I was teaching them about taking, but not about giving. I had to up my own game and let them know I was worth thinking about gifts for. I decided I needed to tell them so that I could model for them what they should be doing at gift-giving events like birthdays and holidays. Our kids aren't born knowing this stuff, so we need to communicate with them. When my boys got into high school and college, 
a time in their lives when they might be busy doing lots of other things with friends rather than family, I went bold and put only two things on my Christmas list. The first was a CD of some sort of new Christmas music, showing how long ago I did this. And the second was time, open-ended to do what I wanted with them one-on-one. What a joy and what great memories I was able to create with my request for a gift of time. One year, I got to take a high school boy to a parenting lecture on sleep by a scientist and sleep expert. There's no way I could have given him an hour lecture on sleep, but he gladly came with me as my Christmas time gift, and he learned a lot. He even asked a question from the audience of about 200 people. Was that really a gift, you might ask? Well, to me, it was. Another memory from my gift of time was going to Disneyland with just one son while he was in college in L.A. Yes, I had to fly to get there, but it was worth it. It poured, but we slugged it out, buying cheap Mickey ponchos and wringing out our socks. We were so drenched. He took an entire day to be with just me. It was so precious. What can you ask your family for? What fun activity do you want to do with them? That they can create a coupon for you. Maybe a hike with no whining. A trip to the beach. Maybe they create a Christmas playlist on Pandora or Spotify for you. Be creative. Ask for experiences, acts of service, or my favorite, a letter about you about with the wonderful things they loved about you in the past year. If they can't write yet, have them draw you and the family. However, I have to say, you really, really need to model parent giving for your kids. While they are young, they need to be helped and encouraged in selecting gifts for parents. What I mean is where dad helps them select presents for mom and mom helps them select presents for dad. One young dad had his young sons help him select a nice bracelet from Amazon after taking his boys looking at the shopping mall. Whatever you do, Don't just buy presents for your spouse or any member of your family for that matter and say that they're from your kids. Have them participate. If writing a letter, making coupons, or drawing pictures is what they decide to do, make sure they're done and wrapped and ready for gift giving time. Model the love of giving and make sure it happens. Now, let's move on to another giving topic gifts for siblings. Our kids are trained to expect items from parents, but what about getting gifts from siblings? When and how do we encourage this? I'd say at about five years old and beyond is a good time to start to help your kids figure out how to give gifts to each other. You might give them money to do this, but I certainly would give them a budget if you take that route. If you happen to be following the money recommendations from my podcast on money, They could use money from their spend, save, share jar, or if they're older, from their allowance. The most appropriate category would be to use the spend part of their money, since the share's intention is to share outside the home, but do what you have to do. Have your kids agree on a spending limit or a type of gift like board games, books, or only handmade gifts so that they're in the same ballpark. Sometimes one child is overly generous and Another stingier child can take advantage of them, so a target limit is probably best. Next up is certainly a challenge for some families, gift exchanges with grandparents and extended families. When you have young children, I think it's best if you give clear gift-giving guidelines for grandparents, aunts and uncles, and other special family friends. Set a dollar, quantity, or size limit but try as hard as you can to be upfront about what is reasonable. You know, I love family meetings. I would actually gather those extended family members in person or on Zoom to discuss what's reasonable. If they're part of the decision-making, then you might have more success in getting compliance than trying to say what you want and having it ignored. Relatives ignoring our pleas for present limits is the most common problem I've heard. So try a family meeting to see if it helps. Whether you talk about it in a family meeting or not, 
I would also encourage relatives to give experiences instead of physical gifts, something to look forward to in the future, just like we were talking about above. As kids get to be tweens and teens, lots of families start in on the gift card exchange bandwagon because it's easy and it's something. But a special lunch with grandma could be more meaningful. If grandma lives far away, get creative and have a Zoom lunch where grandma picks the menu and sends it ahead of time for them to eat together. One of our family friends took our boys to petroglyphs every year to paint a Christmas plate. It was so special, and those memories live on today. If you have a difficult time with relatives who give an overwhelming number of gifts and they are not present at the holiday, then I'd encourage you to spread the gift opening out over time so that your kids aren't overwhelmed and wind up ignoring the thoughtfulness of those who kindly shopped for them. The last category I wanted to touch on is large family groups and ideas about what to do. I'm from a very large family and money was always tight, which made gifts such a challenge. However, I know lots of other people with extended families. They feel they not only have to buy presents for everyone in the group, but have to compete to give more expensive gifts than they can afford. Here are some ideas for those of you in similar situations. My first idea is to encourage everyone to move to pulling names from a hat and having a spending limit set. As my family grew, we started out pulling names, but moved on to that gift exchange where we all bought the same dollar value gift and picked numbers to open gifts and you could choose to steal from others or open a new gift. Some other families do a white elephant where you all bring something that you have at your house that you're not using anymore and you wrap it up and do the same number picking. When my siblings and I started having kids, we all agreed there wouldn't be any more sibling gifts, just gifts for the nieces and nephews. Later, even the nieces and nephews drew names so that there weren't so many gifts. Lastly, my siblings and I decided we would save our money and go out to dinner or an event as a group, later the next year, we were able to have some really fun experiences in the name of Christmas months after Christmas was over. The point of all this is to bring some fun and creativity into the gift giving, to create memories of joy instead of a drudge for buying for 10 or 20 or 30 people, presents that they probably really don't need or sometimes even want. The last category I wanted to mention was whether you use it for your immediate family or extended family is setting up a theme for your holiday where everyone participating uses that theme for giving. You can also do any of these with the gift exchange swap idea that I just mentioned, but here's a list of ideas. Everyone could be giving board games or books or do-it-yourself gifts that are handmade by you. You could do event tickets or everyone bring a gift card Handmade items that are bought locally or online, local products only, maybe movies or movie themed gifts, could be personalized items with us, like mugs with your names on it or sweaters or jewelry or something. You could do puzzles, specialty food, ugly Christmas sweaters. That's always a fun one in my family. <laughs> wine and wine themed gifts. Made in the USA could be your theme or anything by a certain color, maybe anything blue. Any of these ideas could make for some good laughs and memories. Whatever happens with your family and gift giving, make sure that if you or your child receive gifts, that you all write letters of thanks to go with them. These days, even though an email of thanks is getting more acceptable, I still favor old-fashioned handwritten notes. It's your job as a parent to model thanks as well as giving. I hope and pray that some of these ideas will allow you to make any season of giving and receiving a little less stressful and more heartfelt. It does take extra time and effort to set things up sometimes, but it's that extra effort that can make all the difference. That's all for now. If you could do me a favor and write a quick review of this podcast, that would be really amazing. My goal is to help families. And you can really help me by taking a minute to write a review right as you finish this. Lastly, I would love to hear from you if you use any of these ideas for gift giving or if you have some fun traditions in your family for making gift giving more heartfelt. Send email 
to mary at parentingdecoded.com. Take care and be safe. Have a blessed rest of your day.